This is the third part of the 22nd lesson in heat transfer. In lesson 22, we have been discussing internal flow convection heat transfer. In the case when the tube or duct in which the fluid is flowing is held at a constant temperature. In the last part of the lesson, we derived the equation that governs how the mean temperature of the fluid flowing in the tube changes in the direction of flow. In this part of the lesson, we will answer the other common question. What is the rate of heat transfer from the tube wall into the flowing fluid? The change in the mean temperature as the fluid flows complicates this question, and we will see that the answer to the complication is something called the log mean temperature difference. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the equation that can be used to calculate the overall rate of heat transfer into or out of a fluid flowing in a tube with a constant surface temperature. You should also be able to explain what the log mean temperature difference is and why it is useful. On with the lesson. The other question that we can ask is, what's the total heat transfer? Right? Like, what's the heat transfer over some section of the tube? So to do that, to get an equation for that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, we have still um, you know, thermodynamics. And thermodynamics says that the heat transfer is equal to right, the difference in the enthalpy flow rate of the fluid going in versus the fluid going out. I'm just going to manipulate this thermodynamic equation a little bit, and we're going to get back to the heat transfer version of it. I'm going to add TS and subtract TS from this. So M dot C sub P. I'm going to swap this out. I'm going to say I'm going to add TS in minus TMI. And then I'm going to sub, uh, subtract TS minus TS. Minus so you see all I've done here is I've added and subtracted TS. I've, I've, I've not actually changed this equation at all because I've added TS and I've subtracted TS. So TS minus TS goes away. And what I have left over with is you know, minus and minus is TMO minus TMO. But that substitution allowed me to represent this as a, as a you know, a difference in the differences. So I have delta T I minus delta T O. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little tricky thing here. We're gonna actually substitute in for M dot C sub P. Going back to the work that we did here, you see this M dot C sub P, I can actually solve, right? I can, I can like solve this for M dot C sub P. And I'm gonna have, um, stuff divided by the log of the delta T thing. So I'm going to make that substitution. This is M dot C sub P. And what I'm going to be substituting is minus H times A. That's this H times A divided by this log delta T thing over the log of delta T O minus delta T I. So that Q becomes um, H A. I think I'm supposed to have delta T. Oh, you're gonna start. Okay, yeah, this is good. H A times delta T O minus delta T I over the log. Of delta T O over delta T I, that the, the minus gets factored through and swaps the direction. Okay, so this is what the equation becomes, which you may have seen if you've been in heat power lab, some of you have, that you've seen this equation written this way. This thing here is called the log mean temperature difference. So this has a special name. We call it delta T L M. It's the log mean um, delta T temperature difference. So if you think about Newton's law of cooling as a convection coefficient times an area times some difference in temperature, 
that when I multiply those three things together, I get the right rate of heat transfer. That's kind of what this equation does for us. It says, look, you want to know the heat transfer rate, right? You tell me what H is. And in this case, it's got to be the right H. It's got to be the average convection heat transfer coefficient for the total length of tube you want to know the heat transfer over. You tell me the surface area of the tube there. This represents the right temperature difference. This log mean temperature difference is the right temperature difference to apply in Newton's law of cooling. It accounts for the fact that over this length of tube, you've actually had an exponential increase in the fluid temperature, right? So there isn't really one single delta T for the, for the convection heat transfer, but there is when we boil it down into this form, right? And so this is the right delta T for the overall thing. It's like the right average temperature difference, right? even though the temperature difference is changing in the flow direction. Does that make sense? I'll say it one more time because this is really important and you should try to capture this for yourself in your notes. The log mean temperature difference is like, I think of it as it's the right temperature difference to use in Newton's law of cooling in order to calculate the overall heat transfer for a tube that's subject to, to, a, to a, known or a known temperature at the boundary. It's the right temperature difference to use in Newton's law of cooling. That's really its only value. To me, 